You're listening to the RE Social Podcast with your hosts, Andrew and Vince from OnV Invest. For more information, go to onvinvest.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of RE Social Podcast. Today, we have the lovely ladies from the Furnish Finder Podcast. Actually, it's, it's called uh, Landlord Dairies. Uh, welcome to the show, Kelly and Kaylee. Thank, Thank you. you. We're excited to be here. Yeah, for so people who don't know, I don't know who wants to go first. You, you guys can decide. But tell us about um, you guys first and then talk to us a little bit about uh, the podcast you guys have. Sure. So my name is Katie. I live in the Denver area. I have been the more I learn about real estate investing and midterm rentals in specific, the more I kind of grow my portfolio. So um, we kind of group up and we have decided to invest with my family um, as a group. So we have some rentals throughout Colorado, Iowa, and we have one in Florida, but that's kind of an outlier because we're doing a seller finance deal to actually offboard it. Um, so right now we have 10 rentals all together. Nine of them are midterms. Um, and it, at, Fur- at Furnish Finder, I'm the marketing director. So, um, Kelly and I get to do all sorts of stuff like this. And we have the super fun job of getting to work on how to get the message out about Furnish Finder, how to use it. Um, and all things midterm rental. So it's pretty fun that like the stuff that I do on the personal investing side overlaps so much with work. So it's 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 a cool yeah. seat to be in. And I'm Kelly. I am the Landlord Diaries podcast host and marketing associate at Furnish Finder. I am also a midterm rental investor and I like to say enthusiast. We all have more to learn, right? Our systems can all get better. Uh, so I love that we get to talk with professionals in the space all around the nation and share midterm rental host stories from fellow Furnish Finder hosts and just really get a grasp on what all the challenges and success stories are from uh, the midterm rental space all around the country. Love it. We got some some big dogs today. Well, I am, <laughs> um, my name is Andrew and I am uh, pretty much in charge of the operations and managing and messaging guests, getting things booked. Uh, we're, you know, working with a virtual assistant who's helping out with that a little bit as well. And point is, is that I basically am kind of the head of that. So I've got a ton of insight and of course, holes in my thinking and blind spots and things I'd love to ask you guys about. First thing is, is why did the fee go up to $150? I'm upset. Who do I write the letter? <laughs> you can't be upset. It's still <laughs> like- so... Low inflation. I'm playing. I'm inflation, playing. Inflation. I know you're, yeah. but it's a good point. And honestly, um, when we started sending out the messaging, I think we were expecting to hear more feedback than we really did. And and we've never raised the price before now, ever since Furnish Finder became Furnish Finder 2014. So, yeah. 2014. So it's really, it was born. Wow. You know, we've grown so much and we want to make sure that we have the wow, technology. Dude. I know. I didn't realize it was only service. 10 years old. And That's crazy. Yeah. Is, is that like a rolling over? So do anybody get his grandfather in or when the renewal comes up? Oh, no. Oh, renewal no, is it's, getting hit yeah. in the face with it. <laughs> right. But I mean, um, it's 50 no, I'm, bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'm playing. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, for, for, for an entire get, year, it's an easy yeah. swallow. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just playing with you guys. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely it's, worth it to get that. I mean, just the... Uh, the leads is like well right. worth it. You get one account, one person, um, and it's paid for itself over and again, as long as you've bought yep. right and you're managing something right. correctly. So. Right. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about Furnish Finder. And I know you're not the owners, but I mean, you probably know heck of a lot more than um, most of anyone else we've talked to. So I was born in 2014. And why? What was kind of the problem that they were trying to solve? Yeah. So, so the original owners of the company, um, they actually had some properties of themselves that they found themselves renting to traveling medical professionals. And pretty soon they realized, Hey, there's a larger problem here that these medical professionals need a better way to find properties like this to rent. So they shifted over, created the marketplace. Obviously I'm speeding along the story quite a bit. Sure. Um, but (laughs) Created the marketplace. Um, and originally it was just for medical professionals. So it was strictly like travel nurses, um, allied travel medical professionals. 
um, and, and helping them to find housing for like their contracts, 13 week basis, whatnot. And then pretty soon it was like, okay, there's a much bigger need here, especially as COVID hit. Um, uh, we're all living more re- remote lives. Um, so it's, it's just continued to grow and grow. So we are the home for everything midterm rental. Like it's kind of like what we do. It's all we do. All the listings on the site are for 30 days and up furnished monthly rental. Um, so we're like really honing in on that sweet spot. And the biggest other difference is that we're we're a lead generation site. So it's not like Airbnb or VRBO where you go on there as a traveler and you're going to book on the website. Um, you pay to list your property once a year and then you get leads. It's up to you to follow up with those leads, connect with them. And then the traveler pays you directly. So they don't pay any extra fees at the transaction point and neither do you. So that's kind of where we think the sweet spot is and where the future is going is to like get out of the game of always adding an extra 3% or 7% or whatever it is and just allowing those connections to happen. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to add a few things to that. The going even, even further back, our founder is, they are such a heartfelt team and he was in the hospitals. Brian Payne was in the hospitals and finding that talking with travel nurses like, Hey, where are you staying? It's similar to Jesse Vasquez's story. He's like, where are you staying? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm staying in motel six or whatever hotel it was. Oh, how much are you paying? You're paying that much. Wow. And so it started to, uh, as a need that he realized we can answer for a specific group of travel nurses right now with the properties that we have. And then like Katie said, it grew to so much more. And now we've, with an SEO focus from the very beginning, now we've grown to over 200,000 listings nationwide. And if you have never used our furnishfinder.com forward slash stats page as a traveler or as a landlord, it is such a great tool to kind of get an idea of where you would want to travel to based off your budget or where you would want to invest based off your budget. Yeah, it's a pretty genius business idea. Uh, it's, you know, connecting people. It's helping solve a, a problem as a one-stop shop. And it's so clean. It's the one yeah. monthly, or sorry, annual fee. And that's it. That probably right. say, I mean, how big is the staff? Is it like four people? What's going on? <laughs> well, the, <laughs> we have a smaller front end staff, if you will, than the back end staff. Um, but we're actually expanding a lot right now because as we're growing so dramatically, we want to make sure that we can keep up and provide the best service possible to everybody. But it's nice because we do take out that middleman. So, right, like if you think about an Airbnb, like if you have a conflict with a guest or something goes wrong, like you're always going to Airbnb's people. Like Mm -hmm. we are just of the mindset, like we're going to strip that layer out. We're going to give everybody the tools to have um, a clear lease, clear screening, all of these things. And then it's like making those connections. So we have a sister company called key check for people that need access to those uh, like leases and background screens and things like that. Um, if they don't have prior systems, it's really great, but it's not, mm-hmm. it's not required. It's just a really cool, um, platform that we offer, but I always kind of think of it like a dating site, right? Like we're here to like match you with your potential people that might work well for you, but then like you go out to dinner together, right? Like yeah. we're not I purchased, I purchased 50 roses the other day on Furnish Finder. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it is an additional add-on and that joke. is that's a fee, those <laughs> roses. Upgrades. But yeah, it's an upgrade. <laughs> no, it's genius. Yeah, it's just a simple middleman just connecting yeah. SEO. I love it. I I um have so many questions that I could probably answer just by a quick Google search, so I apologize. But I uh, I mean, for almost everything we've booked in the now couple two and a half years of the furnished rental kind of stuff, it's almost all Airbnb. Mainly because it was just one of the quickest, biggest players on the... It just has been one of those that we just kind of got um, very comfortable with. Right. Um, But as of late, especially with all of the municipalities uh, cracking down and requiring 30, 31-day stays, what kind of... I mean, what kind of 
changes have you guys seen now that you're starting to see all that happen? Has it been like exponential growth or no? There's been exponential growth, I think, for a lot of reasons. Part of it is people wanting to diversify their portfolio. Um, some people who are in really seasonal markets like to flip the switch. And once high season is over, then they'll flip it over to midterms. I think part of it is because of regulations. Like you said, that's pretty market specific. Um, another reason I think is just how interest rates and the market itself has gone. It's hard to make a long-term rental cash flow anymore. So if you're in it for a cash flow versus an appreciation gain, um, furnishing it and turning it into a midterm still allows you to abide by a lot of um, municipality and like HOA regulations. Um, and you can, and, and, but they're a lot easier to manage than a short term. Right. Mm. So it's yep. kind of, and I think just like the general awareness, right? Like if you would have said midterm rental probably five years ago, I think a lot of people would have been really confused, but it's become just like the awareness has become so great with it. It's like the new, like hot topic on right. all things real estate. Buzzword. Yep. Similar buzzword. to the, corporate housing right but yeah. a much more trendy and broader explanation yeah. of who travels we've got so many different traveler types uh we can get into that if y'all want but i wanted to circle back to something you said andrew uh, about airbnb versus furnished finder i have an awesome example for that i've got a house in georgetown that we can only midterm rent or long-term rent because it's a 30-day minimum Mm -hmm. And we were so excited about this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's walkable to a really cool downtown square. Uh, it's a suburb of, of Austin. And so we ended up uh, in the height of the Austin market buying two properties on that site. So since then, because we are we really love the model, we've told our neighbors about it. We uh, There's three to five more in the neighborhood now. So we've got somewhere between five to seven rentals in the neighborhood all focused on midterm rentals. And I, my husband and I, we get 90% of our business from Furnish Finder, where my neighbor down the street uh, on the same exact, like four houses down, she gets most of her business from Airbnb. So, you know, we're full supporters of the idea, why not put your properties out there wherever they need to be seen? And Sarah Weaver uh, of Bigger Pockets says, all she needs is Airbnb and Furnish Finder. Uh, her co-author, Ziana McIntyre of the book 30 Plus Day Stay, um, says Airbnb, Furnish Finder, and Zillow is what she uses. So it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. really, you want to be present wherever your potential leads might come from. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're just now getting into that. Uh, all the OTAs. We're now on Airbnb, Verbo, uh, Furnish Finder, and... Now Zillow as well. I'm um, just getting it out there because now we're really making this push to go 30 days uh, minimum while still having a little bit, little taste of what that cash flow was beforehand. Uh, I'd say in general, for sure, it's a little less cash flow when you go for those more extended mm -hmm. stays. Well, it's a lot less maintenance, less hassle and in and out and the cleaner schedule and the whole, you know, it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's the game that we're playing right now. With When it comes to Furnish Finder, um, it's kind of perfect timing, actually. So selfishly, I'm just going to be like kind of hitting you with some questions. Um, Please. Yeah. So um, I feel like I'm missing something. And I'm just now starting to get my claws into it and reaching out to people that are unmatched leads. I'm starting to kind of just get aggressive with that. Um, what is the trick? Why Why do you think you are using mostly Furnish Finder? Of course, you're you know employed there and you know the system really well. Okay, so there's that. But beyond that, and then versus your neighbor who's doing Airbnb, what's what's working for you versus working for her? Yep. Uh, so as far as Furnish Finder goes, it's a pretty simple algorithm. So if you want to promote yourself towards the top of search results as best as possible, we keep it very simple. Calendar is super important. It operates totally different than the other OTAs because we're not a direct booking site. So all you have to do is put your next availability. If you don't know what your next availability is, that's okay. You put whatever you think is your next availability. Because mm -hmm. what that does is it helps connect you with those leads uh, to potentially have a match for your expected availability. So that's one thing that a lot of people do wrong is they'll take the property down and hide it rather than keeping it active. 
And they'll also forget about their calendar. So they'll get a booking and yeah. be like, we got a booking. But then they won't go change their availability date to anticipate yeah. for the next day. So for Dave and I, we get a ton of uh, month, like they'll set it up for maybe three months, but then want to be month to month after that. So we don't know what our what their necessarily their move out date is. We'll just put whatever they have said they know they're going to be there through. And now we have the window of opportunity that anytime someone says, hey, I'm interested in your place, we can circle back to our current guests and let them know, hey, we found like there's someone expressing interest. You have first right of refusal. Uh, and, you know, not everyone does that. Some people go ahead and block the calendar off and reserve future stays. However you uh, work your business is great, but that's how my husband and I do it. And it's been very successful because then it's a way to check in with your current guests and they'll either say, we don't know yet, or, you know, go ahead and rent it out to them. Or they'll say, yes, we're moving out for sure. So that's one thing. Katie, what do you want to add about it? I think really like what Kelly's describing is like, she's using the platform like she's working the platform, right? These OTAs have really trained us all that you make the most amazing listing you can. You put it up and you like sit back and you wait. You wait for your phone to ding or you to get um, an email like so-and-so booked or so-and-so is requesting to book if you have instant book off, right? Like you're waiting for kind of that like magic to happen or like the confetti to burst. And then you're like, mm -hmm. yes, I got a booking. Mm -hmm. Furnished Finder is the complete opposite. Yeah. So we really have to like spread that message. Furnished Finder is going to give you leads. The leads come in in a few different ways. Um, and this is where travelers go on the website and they can put in what's called a housing request. This housing request is essentially them saying like, I would like to go to Denver. I need a three bed, two bath. I have a dog. Here's my budget. Here's my dates. And our system sends that message out to any landlords who might fit that bill. And it categorizes that lead for landlords. So in your landlord dashboard, it's going to show it as either a general housing request, which means this person is looking for a house exactly like yours or an apartment, condo, whatever. Like they're looking for a property exactly like yours. Like we're like giving you the gold nugget on the plate, but yeah. it's up to you to reach out to them. Yep. And then there can also be leads that are like, hmm. You know, this person was looking for a two bed and you have a three bed or your budget was a little bit off. Your dates were a little bit off, like right. close, but no cigar, I always call them. But again, it's like it's here, but you've got to do something with it. And then yeah. the last one is a direct booking request. And those are when these tenants are reaching out to you and literally saying, I want to book your property. What is next? Now, people can also reach out via message on the platform. So there's a lot of ways that these connections or these sparks can kind of start. However, it's up to you to get into those leads matched or unmatched and like message those people. And we, you can, you can message on the platform. You can also text them or email them if they've mm -hmm. provided that information. Most of yeah. these travelers do because they mm -hmm. want somewhere to stay. Yeah. Right. So like it's, but it's up to you to like reach out and the quality of your message. So I think that's another thing that, a lot of users aren't quite used to where it's like, it really is the middle ground between long term where you're like giving tours and, and having long phone conversations and short term where you're just, you, you open your email and you're like, yay, I have a booking. Like yeah. it is the mid, right? Where it's like, we still want the connection there. And that's intentional because it needs to be a really good fit because you're not there for five days, right? Right. You're there for an average of a hundred days. So like yeah. you need to communicate a little bit and vibe each other out. That's something that I've learned is that it is not like the other platforms and right, that right. I, I've got to go hunting. I mean, it's mm -hmm. all there. There's plenty of, right. you know, fish to be, uh, Know, had but I didn't realize that so I'd set this I'd already set up like a year ago and just was totally. like well I guess first fire doesn't work and then I eventually you know was doing more homework and realized oh it's just that's just the way that platform is right uh, you know and you just got to go out and and be a little aggressive I, I do get the messages and I get interest but for sure the majority of conversations I'm having are coming from me looking at like okay cool they're wanting a place it's just one city over from mine Looks like they want to stay here. This kind of place, I got a perfect spot, uh, and I shoot them a message. And um, right, yeah. But I, a lot I of times, it's to... like the the quality of that message, right? 
Um, like I went back and I was doing some uh, Sherlock Holmes work one day and I pretended to be a traveler and I put in a housing request and I got so I, I got messages that were like, I have an apartment. And I was like, tell me Sit. more. Right. <laughs> like, this is your chance. So you really like have to be thoughtful about every step because you're you're mm. sharing your property every step of the way. Right. What would you recommend? What kind of verbiage? What kind of message? I mean, I could, I could probably assume, but you're the expert. Yeah, I always suggest to people to introduce yourself to them. Like, you know, I know it's obvious, but like, hi, my name is Katie. Yeah. I have, you know, one property or I have two properties or I rent a, ha a room in my house mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. It is a, and then I'll give it a brief description, right? It's a three bed, two bath. And right. then I address what, like, I'll either say it matches what you're looking for perfectly. Yeah. Or I might say, um, it's exactly what you want, except right. Like it's a three sure. bed and you're looking for a four bed or whatever. Like, sure. do you think that could work? I will also put a link to the property, mm -hmm. um, or I will share the property ID nice. number and I'll let them know like, Hey, like you can also type this property number into the map. If you're having a hard time finding it, like, let me know what you think, or if there's anything that anything else you're looking for, I try to, I try to give them as much information as possible because I don't want to have I don't want them to have to ask the questions in order for them to be answered. And then I feel like if I don't hear back from them, which we are in a world of 2024 where people just don't get back to you if it's not a fit. Gone are the days where people say like, I don't think this will work, but thank you so much for your time. Like unfortunately it's kind of our culture now that sometimes that happens. Ghost. I can be sure on my end that I'm like, I gave them all the information and it wasn't a fit. Mm -hmm. Cool. Like that wasn't my perfect date, right? Like I'm going to on to the next one. And I've liked key checks so far. Pretty simple, pretty easy little extension to use. Easy to figure out and navigate. Maybe I'm working it wrong. Again, some of these questions might be elementary to you, but when I've uh, screen tenants on Zillow, I will get their, uh, I will see their income. Mm. Uh, when I do that on with key check, I do not is, am I missing something? Am I doing it wrong? You're not missing something. We key check. Um, we don't have it show the income and primarily because a lot of these travelers, their income changes like all the time. Oh, yeah. Right. So like yeah. if you're a travel nurse on a 13 week contract, you're probably right. making a different amount this 13 weeks than the next mm. 13 weeks or the next. So it's just like their whole system is set up a little bit differently. Yeah. And it probably wouldn't be accurate if it showed you something. Sure. Um, but really what you, we want to make sure that that landlords see is um, credit score for yeah. any like alarming items on their credit yeah. history background check, including like criminal history, or mm -hmm. if they're like a registered sex offender, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then their eviction history, which is really nice. Yep. Yeah, that's great. It gives you all that. That does make a lot more sense. Thanks for clearing that yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because I'm actually um, talking to uh, a, a traveling nurse. I'm hearing a lot of the other side of the game. I'm like, oh, that's right. Like she's right now, she just signed some contract for some other place because the contract before I just cut it like Right before right. Christmas, I guess. She found herself out of work all of a sudden and had to figure it out and the housing. And anyways, it's been kind of interesting to to kind of uh, you know see the other side and kind of what their perspective is and how it works on their end. So it's, it's helped me a little bit. Um, in, in terms of the process, walk me through, help me pretend like I'm a fifth grader and I'm managing these properties. That's basically my Q level. <laughs> and walk Come me on, through what that would look seventh like. Seventh grader. I mean, <laughs> are we using? Um, is there a, a lease templates within the platform of Furnish Finder as well? What kind of tools can I use as a landlord? So that's all on KeyCheck, and the reason KeyCheck is separate is because Furnish Finder was like you know child number one, and then we realized like okay, some people once they once they find the tenant have their systems and they they have their processes they just put their tenant in that in that flow mm -hmm. and some people were kind of hanging out to dry right so we're like okay let's let's give them good products that work for midterm 
Um, so key check is the screening. It's state specific leases that you can customize, which is really nice. Um, there's renter's insurance. There is um, payment processing. That's the one that I was okay. Missing. I didn't know so that. that you, yeah. So you can set all that stuff up. You can use what you want. Um, like sometimes you can be like, oh, I have my payment stuff already set up, but I all could a use a lease, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like you take take what you need. But yeah, it's it's a really cool yeah. toolkit that's available if, if because you don't things mind are just asking, like a little different. Yeah, and I know I could probably just you know look it up right now. But if you're only asking, no, good. what's the 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 pricing for all that stuff? So I believe yeah. the leases are thirty nine ninety nine. Is that correct, Kelly? Um, yeah. The background checks are thirty nine, but traditionally the tenant pays that. Right. Um, right. and the um. Payment processing just depends on if they're going to do credit card or ACH, um, but mm. they're pretty pretty comparable. Just takes a little fee, or right, and the yeah. tenant by default would pay that, right? So, like, if I'm a tenant and I want to use my credit card so I can get my points, because mm. a lot of these right. travelers they're like racking up their Southwest points or whatnot, like that mm. that percentage that you know those processors all charge that'll fall to the tenant. Love and it. a cu- a couple things we haven't added in yet that I kind of fill in the gaps that will add to the conversation uh, is the tenant screenings are a soft pull. So that's really nice to tell uh, your, uh, you know, your potential traveler is, hey, it's not going to ding your credit score. Love that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the, yeah. the other nice thing is it really is a five minute process. So if they are ready to put in the, you know, small details like their name, social security number, date of birth, that kind of stuff, the tenant screening can happen within five minutes. So you can have once what I like to say is once they say, hey, I'm ready to move forward. If they move forward with that tenant screening, then pretty much 99 percent of the time, that's your next tenant. They don't want to put the buy in with the thirty nine ninety nine unless they're serious. Sure. Um, So that's really nice about it. And then he check in general, because it is a furnish finder product and especially travel nurses. Um, and on our site as well, we train so much towards safety. So they have been taught to make sure and verify landlords properly. Every landlord is verified that posts on Furnish Finder. It's a really thorough vetting process. So when they hear that you are doing the background checks, the leases, the tenant, the rent payments through key check, it adds this level of security automatically that's like, ah, Okay, I feel safe with this landlord. Got it. Yeah, that's great. Um, I feel like we've been hogging the mic and Vince is probably, <laughs> he probably wants to pivot. I don't want to speak for him. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah but you own nine, what, what 10 properties? What, what's going on with that? <laughs> is that what you're thinking? Tell no, me. I had, a, I had a couple of things I wrote down right. actually because I'm I'm like the numbers guy. I do more like high level stuff. Like, Love it. He starts talking about leases. I already left the building. I'm like, it's <laughs> Like, I don't care. Put somebody in the house. I'm going to buy the next house. You know? I want to have your role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he calls me sometimes. He's like, do not buy any houses this month. And I'm like, bro, we're in a I already, I already bought <laughs> you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I set up, uh, in my defense, I did say that a couple of times. But in my defense, I set up nine Airbnbs or furnished uh, rentals, I should say, in uh, 13 months. That's and amazing. so for lot. perspective, I like to tell people, well, like, imagine moving nine times in a year and buying <laughs> all new everything. Right. Couch yeah. to the spoons. And everyone's like, what? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 2020. It's a lot. It's a year. lot. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, doesn't sound like rich. a lot when you're but like, I'm going to a property. And then, but then you're like, oh, <laughs> down to like the rugs. It's a lot. Yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it. And I got into it and I got my mom into it. She's retired. And. I just, you know, I mean, let's just call it what it is. Houses need that feminine touch. And she was able to be like, well, let's do this there. And she just, and it was great. And I got my stepdad in on the game. He's a handyman. He's building the furniture. It was the whole fam bam. It was great. And I got a, it was nice. I was keeping the money kind of in the family, uh, giving them something fun to do. I was there. So it was like a, it actually was really, really special. Uh, But I am, I got to say, glad that I no longer do it. Um, it is a big undertaking. It's pretty much the only two, three weeks, uh, you know, that's all you can think about and and do. And yeah. it's just every waking moment to get it right, especially because we're running a tight ship, buying a lot of properties. 
and we got a mortgage coming in a month and a half. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's that extra added pressure, but uh, I got into it, loved it. Um, I'd love to actually ask about your guys' experience with all that stuff, like as host yourself. You no, think? yeah, yeah, that's fine. I actually had one question was the, the furnishedfinders.com uh, slash stats, right? So I've been there before. It gives you a lot of stuff. So how do one use that? Like it just says, oh, there's 50,000 people looking. I'm like, cool story. What do I do with this information? Mm-hmm. I think you've got to use it to apply to whatever story you're trying to paint. Okay. Right. Like if, if you're trying to say, I want to have a large midterm rental in the middle of, I don't know, Kansas City, it's there to, to help you either confirm or challenge your underwriting. Right. So it's not the only tool you should rely on, but it's something where you can say, okay, here's the searches versus the inventory. Here's the prices. Does that back up what I'm trying to plan to do? Or do these stats look completely off? Right. Yep. And we always say it's, you know, it's like a supply and demand problem, right? It's like, it's a quick, easy way to analyze any market in the US to get a first step of hey, is this something that makes sense? If so, let's dig in deeper. And then we always say the second step is flip over to the map. Call Mm -hmm. some hosts on Furnish Finder. Watch for ones with five-star reviews or uh, ones that have future availability because that likely means that they are booked right now and willing to talk with you about their experience. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great tool to really analyze anything around the country for travelers or landlords. Yeah. Researching for for a midterm rental is not as data heavy as a short term rental. Like there's no air DNA, uh, things like that, because they're direct bookings. Right. So that information is therefore private. So we can make assumptions. Um, but really the supply, the demand, the pricing split. Um, and if like you said, it, like Kelly, like you said, if you look at the map, you can look and say, OK, well, properties like this look like they're booked. Properties like this look like they might be having a tougher time. So it's really where you have to kind of like piece together some more some more um, information, which is a little bit uncomfortable for people for people coming from the short term rental side sometimes. But you just have to like, I always say you got to like get a little Sherlock Holmesy and like it's like you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle versus just like, here's your spreadsheet, right? So do you have any like ratios or anything like that? So for example, I, I think I looked up, it said so many nurses or someone inquired in that area. And then there is so many available. Did, what do you do with that information? Is, is it one to one, two to one? Like, what do we want to see? I I would take it less as a what benchmark am I looking at? And I would mm-hmm. use it to like compare different markets or different property sizes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? that's so, what I did. So that, uh, that's yeah. because I couldn't do anything else. But it was good to see that some markets, there was a lot of inquiries. And then, you know, the and then I was seeing, okay, how many places are available, you know, right. so then you can see like the density. And then I, th- I believe it was also different bedrooms. You guys give mm-hmm. what is the prices too, right? Yeah. What so that can kind of, that can help you if you're like, okay, I'm going to buy, I want to have a, a two bedroom, but I would need to price it out at this to see, mm-hmm. you know, where would you fall in that kind of, in that scale. And you guys are sourcing all the data from just your website? Correct. And, and that's another reason why you have to use it as a piece um, is because let's say that I just completely direct message Kelly and I say, Kelly, I would like to book your property. That's not going to reflect in those stats. Right. Because these stats are coming from map searches. They're coming from um, housing requests, things like that, and booking requests, too. But there's so many ways that we allow everyone to communicate Mm -hmm. that it's impossible to capture everything. So you've got to just kind of take it and like let it like guide your path, but not it can't be your only source of information. Kelly and I always tell people like reach out to landlords in the area that you're looking at and give them a call like everybody in this in this industry is so welcoming and open to share information because we don't need 50 tenants a year on average we need four so it's like there's more than enough to go around um and the more everyone can network like like good operators are so open to networking because then it can be like hey kelly i couldn't put this nurse in a house like do you have Mm -hmm. any availability and it really does raise the tide so it's it's a cool kind of culture within there that'll help you also guide guide your way there 
Katie, yeah. give Vince some examples from the mid stats that we presented and the kind of data we're able to put together uh, that was presented at the Midterm Rental Summit last year in around April, May timeframe. Yeah. Okay. So, so so things that we can put together are, you know, areas with the biggest supply, areas with the biggest demand. With those, those ratios, areas with the biggest opportunity or um, with the biggest challenges, we can say which markets have grown the most, which have slowed down. Um, Who things travels like with that. their pets, bed, which right. ones are the most popular bedroom size, all of yeah. those things. We can it's also say like tool. general like lead more. time. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'm still a little unfamiliar with it. But yeah, it's definitely tool. I'll start using a lot more since we're really hard on now going 30 day minimums, yeah. which is, you know, the where you guys are beast mode at. So that's really smart. Uh, the way I, I do it is there's air DNA, which is great, but I'm an old school guy. I'll go in as if I am a potential guest. And I have done this with Furnish Finder as well. And I just look on the map and look what, you know, what's happening. Is it a one bedroom? Yeah. What, what are the amenities? What's the price? Are they booked? Are they not? I'll do this with, you know, other platforms as well, such as Airbnb. Where I'll look at, well, are they charging the cleaning fee? I, uh, I, I really like that tip of reaching out to other fellow hosts. Mm -hmm. um, I did that when we got up into the Redlands area for the first time uh, in a furnished play, and I think I had maybe one person actually like pick up their phone or call me back, <laughs> but it was Airbnb. It was right. um, different platform, yeah. And uh, but they were cool. They we touched base for a second, but nothing came of it. I essentially really wanted their insight on like what's your experience been like so far what's an average guest like uh, and they were helpful with that uh, but i really wanted their rolodex of vendors building the team in an area right. is difficult and yeah. i was unfortunately not able to do that but very lucky to build my own organically eventually but that's the other the thing like i'll give anyone my cleaner's name because i only need her four times a year per oh. property yeah right like wow. i'm not keeping her completely busy I love that. <laughs> That's such a move I'm totally going to use if we get into a new market. Like he's got family in Atlanta that we've been talking about investing in, in a really nice area just above Atlanta. Uh, is it north? Of yeah, it's north of Atlanta, like Sandy Springs, Alpharetta. Area. Yeah, that's definitely what we'll do. We'll be just blasting yeah. out uh, phone calls to all the other hosts and see who's going to mm -hmm. be open to sharing even realtors. You know, I think would be a good idea. So yeah, oh, connect absolutely. with Landlord Diaries episode. I've it's not 17. Which one is it? His name is Nahid. So if you uh, if you search probably Landlord Diaries Atlanta, you might be able to pull it up. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also under the corporate housing playlist on our YouTube channel. And there you go. You already have one connection in the Atlanta area that I believe, if I remember correctly, he had about 17 midterm corporate housing rentals in the Atlanta area. His name one more time. Nahid. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Kelly is yeah. a walking encyclopedia for our podcast. <laughs> yeah, let's just pull that time. out. Like, oh, I'm going to look time. up the number right now. Let's see. Here, she'll be like, you guys, on episode 22 at minute mark 37, we said this. That's I'm this like, guy. How do you do like, that? <laughs> this guy knows the, all the addresses, all the PITI. <laughs> he knows... Awesome. Every, from everything that we still currently have and are looking at buying and have sold, he's got it in his brain somewhere. And I'm like, yeah. what was the number on the one? <laughs> right. What color was that one? I it was remember. it was I Stay Atlanta, episode 36 on the Landlord Diaries. Nice. See, nice. There she goes. We will for awesome. sure nerd <laughs> out on that. Thank you so much. Wow. So, Drew, what did you want to talk about? The, their portfolios, right? Let's go. Yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to flip the script. And, you know, yeah, I know you guys are used to talking just mainly on this subject of Furnish Finder, but I'd love to hear your journey and just see what your challenges have been, where the wins have been, and what's what your future is hopefully going to look like. What's uh, whoever wants to start? Kelly, you want to go or you want me? Uh, sure, I'll go ahead because I okay. realized I forgot to say how many properties I had at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know Katie so. has 10, right? <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. And, and she's grown that within the last, a lot of it within the last year, she has scaled yeah. very quickly. So wow. we'll get to that. My portfolio, my husband and I, uh, we tell our full story on episode 32 of the landlord diaries, but what we, <laughs> 
<laughs> Encyclopedia, <laughs> man. <laughs> what we do is we invest in and around the Austin area. We like to be hands-on. So we typically, we have a cleaning team. We have, you know, of course, contractors and people that we can go through. Uh, we actually surprisingly love using American Home Shield as like our main source for our contract team because it's peace of mind. All we got to do is put in the service request and it has worked out very well for us. But uh, we've got about seven doors right now, six to seven doors. And I say doors as opposed to properties, uh, because we've got mainly three bedroom, two bath, single family homes, but one of them has a 600 square foot cottage in the back. And then we added a tiny house to the mix. That's really tiny. Uh, and then we, we co-host on a condo in Austin. So we kind of range everywhere from North Austin up to a little uh, town called Belton Temple, which is about an hour north of uh, Georgetown or or the probably do- hour and a half from Austin is probably the best way to look at it. And our motto is places we can market easily uh, for adventure seekers. So we try to always make sure that if we can, uh, some not all of our properties are this way, but we try to be walkable to a cool downtown vibe that has restaurants and uh, nightlife and live music and things like that. We always like to be by trails, something where you can just leave your front door and experience nature to set ourselves apart in the market. We'll oftentimes uh, let let interested travelers know and put it on our pictures and in our description that if they want cruiser bikes while, you know, they are exploring the area that we will happily make sure and provide cruiser bikes for them. So different things like that, that focus on that adventure seeker. That's cool. So that's like, you're going super niche, creating a blue ocean. I don't know if you guys are familiar (laughs) with that term. It's kind of a new buzzword as well. And it sounds to me like you're over delivering on just like your promise, which is sounds to me like you're doing it right. And I love Austin, the city itself. You're an hour and a half north or south. Have you thought about investing in real estate and taking advantage of all of those benefits without any of the work? That is something that on the invest not only provides, but has been providing since its inception with friends and family. We have built an empire in a system of a wealth generating tool that is giving us and our friends and family that leverage in their life to create true wealth. Go to onbeinvest.com for more to see if you qualify. And thanks for listening. So we live in a suburb of Austin called Round Rock, uh, Mm -hmm. which is, I mean, to get to the heart of downtown Austin is about 30 minutes. So super close. It's normal metropolitan distance from, from downtown, right? So our, we have one in North Austin, uh, two in Georgetown, which is like 30 minutes, same idea, 45 minutes north of downtown Austin. And then, yeah, the Temple Belton area. That's cool. Um, yeah, I like to keep things um, like more current because we have a lot of, you know, the episode will come out in a, you know, a next month or so. Mm-hmm. So I, I would like to have the listeners take something and be able to useful, right? It'd be useful to them. So for example, if you said, oh, all my properties I bought were in the 80s, it's not really going to help. So I want to ask right. you, when, when was the last time you bought the property, uh, uh, the property, and then if you can share some numbers and then we can break it down for the listeners? Yep. Uh, we've added most to our portfolio in the last three years, two to okay. three years. And we were buying a lot of ours in the height of the Austin market. So mm-hmm. probably numbers wise, I, my husband is our numbers guy, so I'm not going to get very detailed in the, to the numbers, yeah, but the way that we've been able to look at it is we had 13 or so long-term rentals in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, with his parents, mm-hmm. they appreciated, but weren't really cash flowing. So over the, I think it was about three years that we owned them. I don't remember the specific timeline there. We sold all of those, split the profit, and that is the that is the cash that we use for down payments for all of these properties that we've added to our personal portfolio over the last couple of years. Um, 
we aim for at least 500 to 1500 in cash flow per property. So the duplexes, the house with the cottage in the back, those are typically our best performers because there's multiple doors on that property. And we have found, you know, if if you present it well, shared spaces are are not a big deal to a lot of people and they're really nice habitats. Uh, and 50% or more of Furnish Finder travelers come with their pets. So a lot of travelers in the midterm rental space want yards. Okay. Yeah. We, we're seeing that too. That is um, good to know. Yeah. I was just listing our property on that and I was tweaking some things to make it pet friendly. It's like fenced in. It's kind of perfect for a dog actually. So good. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, we've we've made a hard pivot from you know long term. I mean, we have the same issues as you. We don't we don't we're we're all in SoCal, so Southern California. So none of our properties cash flow, and they're all sitting on equity. So mm-hmm. and then you know they keep changing the laws to be more communist every year. So we love mm-hmm. that here. You know, don't pay rent and live for free. It's California. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we, welcome we've, to California. We've, I know. So I've been starting to rebalance our portfolio. It's been taken much longer than I thought it would. So so we started buying north of Nashville. But enough about us. We can talk to later. But I want to go into um, Katie's uh, thing now. Yeah. So um, my husband and I became somewhat accidental landlords when we were moving to the house that we're in right now. Um, we built this house with just a local home builder, Richmond. And they had a contingency where your current house had to be on the market within seven days of signing the contract, even though it took a year to build a house. Mm -hmm. And we had no desire to live in an apartment. We've got two young kids. We have essentially a zoo full of animals. And we found a little bit of a loophole where if you rented out your house, all you had to do was show within 30 days of closing that um, you had an active lease signed. Um, And it could even be like future starting. So we were like, we will do that. That would be great. Um, so we did that. We heard I I have a background in commercial real estate, kind of from the the private equity side. So it's kind of familiar, but it's very very different, obviously. Um, and we heard a lot of our friends and family, you know, oh, you don't want to be a landlord. Like, what if the toilet clogs at three a.m. and whatnot? And we it's were like everybody's like, thing. What year <laughs> right. is this, Katie? That you're starting this to do this was twenty twenty one. Oh, okay, cool. Super yeah. height of Head everything's doors going in going. in a couple years. Yeah. So okay. that was our first, and it's been amazing. So that is our one and only long-term rental. Okay. Um, is our old single family home down the road. Um, after that, we said, hey, it'd be cool to do that again. And then we started to think about a short-term rental because of the cash flow potential. Found a property in Florida. We were like, this is great. We purchased it. We ended up not furnishing it because that was when supply chain, like if you ordered a couch, you didn't know if it was going to show up tomorrow or in Mm -hmm. six months. Ooh, that would have been COVID, huh? Yeah, it was just post COVID. So this was, and this was when I was just starting at Furnish Finder. So I was just kind of learning about all this stuff. Um, And it was in a market in Florida that gets a lot of snowbirds. So it still got high long-term ish rent. Um, so we did that, but turns out we actually hate dealing with hurricanes and rust and bugs and stuff that breaks all the time because the Florida environment is just really, really harsh. So we're doing a seller finance deal out of that one. So I don't count that one anymore. Um, after that, we were kind of like, where do we go? I'm in Denver. It's really expensive here and it's hard to make any cash flow at all. I'm from Iowa. My family still lives in Iowa. I'm the only person that left Iowa. And so I thought, okay, my family wants to do this with us, right? We did the Florida experiment together. What if we just look in their own backyard? Like it's not the sexiest place ever, but it gets a lot of, it has a lot of medical centers. It's got a lot of, you know, offices and businesses that that build hubs there because it's cheaper. So we bought a condo um, and for $135,000, we got a two bed, two bath condo. That was not the down that payment. Out. That was the price. That was the whole price. <laughs> in, the in, whole in 2021, price. you bought a condo in Atlanta. That for was in 20, the uh, December of 2021. In Iowa. So we bought that condo oh, Iowa. in Iowa. I thought Atlanta. Okay. No, in Iowa. Yeah, okay. Iowa. So, yeah. And what's the um, growth rate like there? What's the appreciation like? It's like steady. Right. You, you don't get the spikes, but I'm like, it 
it's slow and steady, okay. um, but it's like spikeless, which sure. for right now is great for us. Yeah. Um, so we we got that property. It's done amazingly well. And then we thought, okay, we want to try just like a city down the street, but let's try arbitrage because I started mm. to think I would love to test some of these before we really go all in. Mm. So we found um, an arbitrage partner. We did a studio apartment, got in there. It did amazing. Um, then we did another arbitrage with them. It did amazing. Um, and then we, so we've kept the arbitrages rolling in the background while we're finding or funding our next deal. Um, so right now I think we have six arbitrage, three of them are all within the same. There's like a group of three buildings, all with apartments close to a hospital. And we had one that just killed it. So we did it again and again. So we did four units this summer within six weeks, you and we would four units. We in six those weeks? were those no those were all arbitrage. Oh, got so okay, did, yes, right, yeah, yeah. So we did the whole like I mean, I, we would go in and we'd furnish it in a day. I would fly out, we furnish wow. it in systems. a day, two yeah. max. Like we have the systems down pat. We've got checklists and yeah. crates and pre-wash schedules and all this stuff. Um, you have so a Sarah Beavers that Excel file that she. Do uh, I have it? Uh, yes. oh, have yeah, it? Okay. it's like it's like kind of like it's something I'm oddly proud of. <laughs> oh. um, and then we bought we recently bought a townhouse in Iowa as well. It's our first like I'm calling it a baby fixer upper. Like I'm sure any real contractor wouldn't call it a fixer upper, but it it needed a uh, refreshment. It was built in the 60s and it looks like it's built in the 60s. So we're just at the finish line for that. And we have our first tenant moving into that in about three weeks or so. So just like cosmetic updates and kind of getting it to this millennium. But um, yeah, that one was a three bed, three bath. We got it for 125000 <laughs> And I think once we're all said and done, that one should cash flow about 800 to 800 to 1000 a month. Um, the arbitrages, I always try to double them. So whatever rent I pay, I'm trying to double. Um, so those on average are cash flowing between it's a little bit seasonal because, you know, people don't love going to Iowa in January and February. Mm -hmm. Um, but those cash flow really anywhere from like six, 700 all the way up to a thousand dollars a month. But our technique thus far is like, we've been taking all of the profits and into the next and all the profits yeah. and into the next, especially sure. the furnishings, like mm -hmm. buying a lot of couches real quick adds up <laughs> yeah, but we've so, just been in like gas mode like we've just been going and i do it with my family so that's been really helpful as well like my brother is the handy guy my mom's like the pre-washer my sister's the organizer like we all kind of and what you mentioned it's it is really cool to work with your family on something like that it gives you like this sense of kind of purpose and connection together which is really cool yeah yes it's yeah we got into it. we were blasting music putting yeah. kind of furniture <laughs> yes hanging up Art, yeah, it was. It was. We had a lot of. I fun. hang out with his stepdad more than him. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he was just here today. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cute. Even my 85 year old grandma has started to like make these handmade Kleenex boxes for every unit. I love so, like, it. She can have a part of it. So it's, it's cool. And that little touch right there, even that like, you know, grandma's making a little something. That whenever I'm staying somewhere that's furnished, there's kind of this. You know, is it's a lot of places are kind of soulless, right? Um, at least that I stayed sterile. in. Yeah. Little sterile, right? Like I think I stayed at some place in Dallas where it was the same IKEA picture, like on four different walls. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm not kidding at all. It's like the red phone booth. Um. Oh. Anyways, but yeah. Um. I some of my favorite states have always been with that. Like this looks like it was handmade, or this is like yeah. what is this made of? This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's really cool. That little extra touch is what I want to get into for our next properties. And that's something that we've already been doing through our realtor who's been furnishing a lot of our Nashville properties. Oh, you don't know this, but Vicky introduced us to them. Yes, Vicky. she did. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. We love Vicky. She met them at the the thing down the street, right? Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, just right NAR. Here. It was the NAR, NAR, NAR yeah. National Association of Realtors. Vicky is gangster. Gangster. She's awesome. very peppy. 
She's very peppy. She's very good at her stuff. She lives in Hendersonville, which is our market. She knows everything about the town. She's, I think she's the president or something now. She's, of, she yeah. is the, the, the queen of all of Hendersonville. She's the queen. I'm sure. And she also <laughs> does all of her interior design as well. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. And, and the place looks nice, guys. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like we yeah. would live there. And she's going an extra mile. Like, just, you know, I love what she's doing. Even coming down to just like making the, wi-fi password something nashville-ish oh yeah right. you know it, I, awesome. she, she really adds it, it, there's a, a a huge difference between doing something without heart versus with heart and every, that's what I, I look for in my team is yeah. do it with heart even if you're fixing yeah. a toilet like right you know what i'm saying though like and she's so great so yeah finding the team is huge that's one one of the biggest pieces of advice that i give newbies coming into real estate and like, dude, get your team right. Cause it's going to make mm -hmm. or break you get your tenants, right. It's everything's people. Um, in, in terms yeah. of the lessons, I've got plenty to share, but I want to make this about you guys, Kelly, Katie, whoever wants to go first. What are some of the, like the big learning moments you've had, especially with, it sounds like you both had some pretty good growth. That's pretty aggressive actually. In a couple of years, what have been some of those growing pains? What are some of those, I uh, wish I would have done a different kind of scenarios. I'll just speak to one of our properties. Our one that currently has the most cash flow potential also has the most headaches. So from a tenant standpoint, they're amazing uh, tenants that are have stayed in our property. So fun fact, on Furnish Finder, you don't have to wait till your property is furnished to advertise it. All you have to know is that you own the property and the address and you plan to rent it as a midterm rental. So we have a, ch a box you can check that says furniture coming soon. And you can build uh, like banners onto your photos saying that. Katie does that very well uh, with just like a banner in the corner that says coming soon. And so with our Temple property, we ended up getting our first round of tenants from an insurance company within the the day that we closed on the property is the same day I got the call and I said, well, we can furnish it within two weeks or probably a week. I probably told her a week or we can rent it now, uh, you know, within a couple of days unfurnished. She said, perfect. Let's do unfurnished and we'll have court come in and furnish it uh, for the tenants. They were a super sweet family. At the end, it was supposed to be three months. At the end, it ended up being a year. Uh, but challenge-wise, that property, anything east of 35 is in a bit more of a foundation hot zone. So we've had to do a ton of exterior projects, which turned to interior projects on the Temple property, such as uh, putting a complete zeroscaping around the foundation uh, as a moisture barrier. Uh, our first summer of owning it, we looked down uh, at the foundation and it was like an abyss. We couldn't even see where the, you know, where the ground ended. There was that much of a gap. Oh. So it was like, okay, we need to fix this. And of course, then we started having new cracks and it's pretty often that doors will shift. So we've had to learn to do the strike plates that uh, allow for adjustments. And so we just make sure we have excellent communication with our with our tenants. And if it's not something we can fix right away, that we provide a temporary solution. Both Katie and I, uh, and Katie introduced me to it, we both love Walmart Plus or the idea of, hey, that's something you need. We're going to get that over to you right now. Like the heater went out uh, last year. Um, and so what do you do? You get some form of heat over as quickly as you can. So we got, th we, we took over or we shipped over three, uh, of the portable heaters, made sure and sent the directions on, Hey, here's how to safely operate them since, you know, they're not always known to be the most fire safe. Uh, and that's why they were staying in our home in the first place. Um, and then we, got you know started seeing which contractor was available on the weekend and we got it taken care of as quickly as possible and they were very happy yeah i find that you know problems are inevitable 
in a home mm-hmm. from something mm-hmm. breaking to the cleaner forgetting to check under the couch and there was a sock there. Mm-hmm. There's always a you know something, and I find that it's not necessarily what happens, but how you handle it and the timeliness. And you know, we've got a lot of great reviews and feedback from. Yeah, we had this issue. Andrew was right on it. Vince checked right in on me and got things replaced or done. We actually did that, you know, uh, in this AD just behind us where I just brought a heater, just brought one over. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what? Here, have it. Here's the instructions. Exactly. I set it in front of their door. They weren't home at the time. But yeah, going above and beyond, taking care of it as soon as possible, mm-hmm. you know, and that's every business, every successful business yeah. is yes. it's a matter of not just solving a problem uh, for a client, but it's going above and beyond. You know, yeah. being willing to do that, putting your heart into it. Um, yeah, really, really good stuff. Katie, uh, that's been Yeah, your... I've got a couple that come to mind. I think there's there's definitely been some times where we have flubbed up, but I think it does come back to like you said, like being honest and people can tell when you're being genuine. Um, we have one property in Des Moines, which was us kind of me and my family kind of testing the the long distance thing because it's the closest it is, is about two and a half hours from some of my family. So like, we never want to go there unless it's an absolute emergency. So this was our test of like, truly like long yeah. distance. I mean, I'm in Denver. There's, I think there's four of our properties I've never even stepped foot in. Um, so they all feel long distance to me, but like having none of our like quote team close by, that was our test. And the the tenant messaged me one day. She was like, Hey, I got a notice on the door that the water is about to be turned off. And I was like, mm-hmm. Well, that's not right. <laughs> and turns out I thought I had it all on auto pay and there was some like, you know, entry error or something. Like it was nothing beyond that five minutes on the internet couldn't fix. Um, so having processes for all of that stuff has become really helpful. And not only having processes, but having people that you can rely on for those types of things, whether it's a VA, whether it's an assistant, whether it's a high school senior who you need to check off a list of, you know, admin tasks once a month, whatnot. Like my sister, her now is now her role now is like, she manages all the utilities. I'm like, I I never want to think about another utility. Mm -hmm. That's not what I should be doing. And she's like, no, it's not. I will do it. Um, Um, and that's not visit like in an egotistical way. It's just like, you know, there's too much for one person to do. Yeah. Um, and even if you're not big enough for a VA or whatever, like my 10 year old at one point was helping me like classify transactions. Like I you have that. more, you have more people around you than you think. Yeah. Right. Um, I think the other thing that I've really learned and that has let us scale so quickly. Um, I was actually getting our books ready to send to the bookkeeper for taxes. And in June we had three properties. So from end of June to December, we gained seven properties. So we went nuts. And even if it's an arbitrage, the process of setting it up and everything is still just as intense. Mm-hmm. And I'm while and I you like, have a full time W2. Yeah. Right. With a full time job and like two kids and well, the tell zoo some of the tricks the of the trade. How are yeah, you? Yeah. So this I'm like, I'm like, day I'm, I'm like, anytime I do anything, I'm going to document it. But not like in like an SOP way. Like I, I that's on kind of like my long term to do list, right? The SOPs. But more like if I'm going to order furnishings, it's going to be in the most crazy detailed spreadsheet you've ever seen. And then I have everything on the spreadsheets. Here's my little magic gem. I have my spreadsheet has multiple sheets. And then sheet one has everything I order categorized by room. And then sheet two will have only the stuff on the kitchen. Right. And it's larger print and it has a checkbox by each one. So I order it on page one and I mark and I have the link from the last time I order it. So I literally just go down, click the link, the link, the link. And the only time I have to change it is if it's out of stock or it's no longer made, which usually happens with like couches and stuff. Couches are always changing for some reason. But then I just load it all up and then it all goes to my mom's house. So and she gets it. She will unbox it unpackage it. If it's something that needs washing, she will wash it. And we have these giant totes from Costco and she has them all lined up in her garage. And she has that checklist that's in the other sheets that sheet one links to taped on the top of the tote. And she will check off, okay, the pots and pans are in here and they're washed. Okay. The spoons and forks and knives are in here and they are washed. So we can look at that tote and we can look at the list and we can say, okay, we're only missing the toaster. And then she'll call me, Katie, where's the toaster? And I'm like, well, let me see. 
and I go back to <laughs> page mm-hmm. one and I can click the sheet and I can say, well, I ordered it from Amazon in this state. So it's like making that stuff streamlined. It also makes it so on setup day, we can usually do it in one day now. Um, we bring all the bins over everything that we can pre-build as far as furniture is pre-built or we've hired someone from like thumbtack to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we bring everything over and then like one person takes the kitchen totes and all they have nice. to do is put it away and make it into a kitchen. But like, there's no cardboard. I mean, there's still cardboard, yep. but like most of the cardboard is gone. Everything's already washed. Yeah. Everything's already accounted for. They just know, like, take this and put it away. Yep. We also I, order the same stuff as much as we can. Like I think in my yeah. Amazon history, I've ordered like nine of the same bed frame. So like right. we can put that sucker together in our sleep. Yeah. I keep telling Katie, she needs to build her list where she can sell it I to do. like Sarah Weaver's like, yeah. Sarah, if you don't have a good list that you trust, Vince nailed it. Sarah Weaver's is very detailed with the yeah. links mm-hmm. and right. she has tested it in her midterm mental properties. Yeah, I that was one of the reasons I was able to uh, get that off my plate so quickly and easily. When we went into the Nashville area, I went out there and we just, you know, delayed in closing. There's always something. There's no clean right. deal. And I was like, I got to get back. I, I'm a musician. I'm playing a show. So like, I have to physically be there for that. Mm-hmm. Had to fly back. We closed like in a couple of days later, but we had a great team out there. Our cleaner at the time helped, Vicky. And it was the point is, is I was able to give them everything that I had, you know, basically, I got really gnarly into like SOP mode organization, documenting what I was doing from the photos. So I gave her the checklist, but mm-hmm. I would, I share with anybody, whoever, want, I, my dad just bought a house, like, here's all the stuff. Here's my playbook. Yeah. So it's a checklist, but I don't have the hyperlinks because I found that, I mean, there are certain products I like that are kind of the go-tos and the standards, but um, I don't know, maybe I'm too much of a jazz enthusiast and I like to improvise. But I, I just kind of like to say, here's a list, check it off in the Google Doc and, uh, and you know, just whatever couch you think would fit in that right. particular home. So I haven't gone that far. I, don't know I will make like a different copy for each property or each unit, be- right. but I like to like memorialize what the link to that couch was. Because for me, when you say like a 96 inch couch, that means nothing to me. Mm-hmm. But I can picture how big that one couch was. And I'm like, mm, it yeah. needs to be bigger than that couch. So then I'll go <laughs> right. look at it. But that's just kind of like you learn your quirks along the way, right? And it kind of depends on like your system and who you're sending it to and and what their strengths yeah. are in, yeah. you know, how they organize stuff. So all people. Like, yeah. You just, you just proved it right there. It's everything's people. And your team happens to be your family, which is just a special kind of thing to have it's like everyone's excited they're all part of the journey you know and so you know it, it just it makes it sweeter you know and, it does. Uh, and the wins become sweeter when you're able to do it with mom yeah know, it does in my experience Vince, what do you got buddy what i have realized is i'm never going to be better at this than katie you <laughs> you know vicky i don't know about that i will i will always 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 hire it out there is no yeah. freaking way i'm <laughs> doing any of these things <laughs> if I see one more list, I'm going to burn the house down. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, here's, Drew, here's the list, you know, just, just, you know, do it. Yeah. I always, you know, people have different strengths, you know, like, um, uh, you know, setting up a house is not a good, like, how long did I live like a hobo in my own house? Like, it was like, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. And so then we got our friend Laura and she just destroys mm-hmm. it. Like she's like, she we invite her the first time she comes, she's like, You're homeless. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> so Vince is yeah. a man's man, and he's just he's kind of a geek. So he's got his like figurines. He's got every real estate and every like longevity book known to man and sh- and shelves mm-hmm. and stacks. Uh <laughs> and I think we, you know, we wouldn't spend some money on your bed, but everything else is just like yeah. it's a man palace. He but you like learn place. your roles, right? Like yeah. my brother is like not allowed to hang anything on the walls. The <laughs> first property, the first condo we did, we were like, okay, we need you to mount a TV in each bedroom. He put them so high. Oh yeah. I was like, Classic. these nurses are coming from the hospital. They don't want to like go back to the hospital <laughs> TV way up there. And he was like, well, it's logical. You're laying in bed. So you need to look up. So oh. like you quickly <laughs> yeah. learn like, now we have rules, both spoken and unspoken, where sure. it's like, no, you're not allowed to do that. 
that's that's such a huge pro tip though like just to kind of bird's eye view what we're really talking about i just like to kind of give value as much as i can to whoever's listening um i find that that's probably why this is totally a theory i think this is why people who get into their 40s and 50s is when they really start to have these huge windfalls of of cash flow and of real like financial success uh, i grew up super broke so i'm like a nerd on studying this stuff like how do they do it like how can i not be so broke all the time right been very lucky to have achieved a whole different level of financial uh freedom thanks to this guy and just hard work and learning the lessons but uh, i've noticed that the older i get the older vince gets you guys get the more i start to realize who i am what mm-hmm. i'm actually good at which is not much and i think it's everybody we have like right. a couple things i read a book called 10x is easier than 2x and yes i'm that. in the middle of that one right Good. now it's right over there there's, there's a couple of great <laughs> chapters on that yeah. yeah and that was one of them they were like you know um that's why 10x is easier than 2x because you're getting rid of everything else that you're yeah. not passionate about and energized about um therefore you're serving things at such a higher level when you just hyper focus on like the one or two things and then partner with people who are way better at the other stuff that you don't want to do and make wins together everyone at the top is collaborating Mm -hmm. right it's counterintuitive too i think especially for our generation where we were just kind of taught from the boomers or so like you know you work really hard you do everything like You're not going to pay for something that you could yep. do yourself. Like it's very unnatural for me to give stuff to other people. Like I'm very good at at underwriting the deals and kind of gauging them and finding them. But like once it comes to like the money management, I want absolutely nothing to do with that. So my husband took that role. His title is um, the chief financier. We tried to make it as fancy as we could, but it's <laughs> it's like. I was doing everyone a disservice by trying to fill that role. Like it was just the wrong shoe, but that's not what we're taught. Like that's even you go to, you know, you go to elementary school all the way through high school. It's you're supposed to be good at every subject. We're not taught in our culture, like find your special thing and like go all in on that. But that really is where people make those 10 X's and those, those giant leaps. And you find that team to support you. It's just really unnatural. I love that you guys have both have W-2s. Katie and I both have W-2s. I took a year off and realized I don't like that version of myself. Like there's such a huge push nowadays for the, oh, make sure you have financial freedom so you can do whatever you want with your time. I found that I am the healthiest version of myself if I can work for someone uh, and work harder for that person, then I would work for myself. And mm-hmm. that's Katie and I make a great team uh, in that in that way because I like being able to roll up to someone and say, "Hey, here's what I'm thinking. What do you think?" So it's been I think I think W two support real estate very well. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm actually not a W two. Oh uh, no, I have a W two, but you give yourself. But I am a W two <laughs> manager. My it's a there you go. You're you uh, you're a self. You own your own business. Yeah, yeah. But no, that's so great, and I love that. That's you. You kind of realize, okay, this is my happy place. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm strongest and the most energized and the best version mm-hmm. of myself. Yep. You know, and and just the the more refined you get on that, just the better things get because you just keep pushing things out of the way. Like, nope, nope, nope. Give yep. that to him. Give that to mom. Yep. Give that to brother or whom whoever. Right. Yeah, and, and double down on what you're really doing well, which sounds like you guys are both, you know, with the amount of growth you've had this past two years, sounds like you're doing something right, you know. Yeah, hey guys, I guys, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, oh, yeah, you guys have to go. Um, before you leave, um, I want to end with, uh, you know, people always say, hey, is this the right time to buy, invest, look into this, search online, whatever, right? So, what do you guys say to listeners who are listening? Whether they're trying to get into their first property or their next property, do they sit it out? Do they come to the Furnished Finder Summit with uh, Jesse Vasquez? What, I'm going to push come to the summit. Come on. <laughs> come to the summit. I'm going to push people back to your podcast. Listen yeah. to the episode with Tony Robinson. And mm-hmm. he said at the very end, he said, if a 
property is cash flowing right now at the seven or eight percent, which I think we just went down to six percent, right? I think we're down yeah, to six percent interest half, yeah. rates now. With if no it's points. cash, right? If it's cash flowing at that, well, you should buy because very soon you might be able to refi and then it'll cash flow even more. Or if the interest rates go up, well, then you got in at the right time. So I thought that was great advice. Yeah. Wins on both ends, which is more yeah. of the story. Yeah. Just buy, but buy right. Obviously, right. don't just buy. And have an exit strategy. And that's the best thing about midterm rentals is they, you want to aim for one and a half to two times the profit of long-term rentals, but your exit strategy is long-term rentals. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a great real estate investment strategy with a very easy, a very doable exit strategy. Yeah. I think I, I've heard the saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. And yeah. I think with you know the dynamics of real estate, it's always going to be changing, but you always have the option to refinance. You know, you you can always the rates can always change. But I think you just need to make sure that you work the math every single way that you're comfortable with. And if a big move is too much for you, that's okay. Right. Um, For us, like we started with the Florida property and then we were like, oh man, like this was too much because when that property was vacant, it was a big mortgage to carry. So that's when we kind of like re restarted, if you will. And we're like, okay, we're going to start more and like lean our way up because now if a larger property we have is vacant, these smaller properties support it. Right. Financially. But it's like, you hear a lot of messaging of like, you know, go big or go home or, you know, just take the leap or whatever. And it's like, take the leap that feels comfortable to you. And if that's arbitraging a studio, it's arbitraging a studio. If it's going all in and doing, you know, a five bedroom midterm rental, like awesome, but you're talking finances, right? So you need to make sure that you have an exit strategy, you have some backup plans and you're, you're working within your own level of like comfortable risk, right? You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you could be really concerned with things, but also go to the midterm rental summit, Mm -hmm. Uh, the midterm rental summit. Yeah. Can I drop a little plug here? Yeah. Yes. (laughs) The midterm rental summit is in April, right? Kelly? It's end of April. It's in April. Um, Kelly also helps me keep track of my life, which I love her for. (laughs) <laughs> um, it's in the end of April. It's in San Diego. Jesse Vasquez is putting it on for the second year. Furnish Finders partnering with him to put it on for the second year. It's going to be amazing. It is on the smaller side for conferences, which is so cool because you get a lot more intimate experience. You get to talk with people, network more, ask the questions, all those things. Um, it's going to be a two day experience. Um, and I believe the tickets are either at early bird now or just beyond that. So they're still at one of the lower price brackets. Um, But last year, the amount of value that was given and taken away was like mind blowing. And I, he's going to do that again, if not better. So if you are a midterm rental host, or even if you're like thinking of that as an option, it's definitely somewhere where you can go and collect a lot of actionable items, which is my favorite type of conference is when you come home and you're like, okay, I actually have things to put into play now. Yeah. And then just the networking alone. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's like 90% of the reason we go. (laughs) It's like you just meet the one person that like symbiosis happens. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. We'll we'll both plan on being there for sure. And how can uh, people find you guys? So you can find the Furnish Finder podcast, which is the Landlord Diaries, which Kelly and I are on. Um, It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, all the things. Um, I also have a personal Instagram that people are welcome to reach out if they have questions. Um, it's just at Ms. Katie Lyon. Lyon is L-Y-O-N. Um, and otherwise, just feel free to reach out to us anyway through Furnish Finder. Like we have such a cool role because we get to like be the midterm rental investors and hosts and also like live and breathe it at work every day. So it's this like really unique, cool position that we love. So we love, love talking with um, anyone who's just thinking about getting a property to, you know, super experienced investors. And yeah. I want to roll out with one part we haven't talked about is 
the what makes us different than a lot of other OTAs is no booking fees. So while you're paying mm-hmm. that one annual rate that just happened to have a, a rate hike, a very small one, $150 per year compared to what, th- oh, 3% or more of whatever your booking is uh, on other OTAs. Which definitely adds up to more than 150 well, a year. Oh my well, gosh, so much. With one transaction, yeah. it passes it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well worth it. Uh, I can definitely say with confidence. It's a great platform, easy to navigate, you know, set it up. The challenge is in making sure that you're staying up to date. If you got multiple TAs up to date on what when it's available, that's something that I slacked off on at first. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, and then aggressively be like taking advantage of that pool of leads that that you're just going to be fed fed every single day so yeah yep. thank you for your time you guys hopefully we'll see you at the end of april in san diego just down the street from us if you guys need a place to stay we got you <laughs> we got a few a bunch of rentals here so yeah, nice. Orange County. yeah. they're not critique awesome. the furniture like, i don't like what he did with his couch <laughs> <laughs> all right all right thank you guys so thank much guys. we appreciate thank you. y'all bye thank you. i don't know about you but i definitely like to see five star reviews on any service or any product before I purchase. Please take a second to leave us a five star review, whether you're listening to it on Apple, iTunes, or Spotify, or whatever platform. Take a second, goes a long way, helps us a lot to grow the channel. And thanks for listening.